Become what you love, not what you hate. See, the Heavenly Father created us in his likeness. So that's why one of the schemes of the enemy is to try to cause us to hate ourselves. Because if he can get us to dislike ourselves, how can we possibly love God who created us in his image? See, the devil wants us to go against the very nature of God in order to cause unbelief in our hearts. And that's why sin brings forth depression because that's something that the Heavenly Father hates. So if that's the identity that we're living within, it will put us in a place of lack and make us feel like the Heavenly Father don't love us. So I was reading in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, and it say, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stir up conflict in the community. See, everything that I just read in that scripture is the complete opposite of God's character. So if he created us in his image, and we're living outside of the will of God based upon what I just read. That's the complete opposite of what God wants us to be. So the more we fall into the enemy schemes, the less love that we feel from the Heavenly Father because it's separating us away from his presence. So that's why sometimes we can feel distant because we're living within the wrong character. See, the world wants to give us an identity. And the enemy want us to become a slave to the stuff of this world. So that's why we feel the need of thinking we have to chase after all this stuff that's perishable. It could be destroyed. It could be taken away due to storms or thieves that break in and take it. See, if we're not living in the character of God and we're living a life that's the opposite of what God want us to live, that's what brings forth lack in our lives. That's what brings forth confusion. That's what calls us to feel conflicted because we're not living in the abundance of who God is. In Galatians 5, verse 22 through 26, it say, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you also can say temperance. That's also self-control as well. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. See, that's why through Christ, we must be born again. Because... That's how you live within the character of God. That's how you become what you love, not what you hate. Because the words say we got to love one and hate the other. So we can't be one foot in, one foot out. We can't have a double standard mind. We got to have singleness of mind. And that's to just keep your eyes focused on Lord Jesus. See, through him, we crucified the flesh. Through him, we walk in the spirit and we let go of the desires of the flesh. But the enemy wants you to live a life that's opposite from that. So that's why you feel so distant. That's why you feel so much hatred because you're living within the stuff that God hates. So it's really the spirit of God that's convicting you. It's the Holy Spirit that's trying to Remove the blindfolds off so you can see the error of these ways that we must let go of. See, the problem with change in a lot of our lives, if I truly be honest, speak the complete truth, people have fell in love with sin because they like the way it feels. They have gotten to a place of just feeling comfortable with sin. And that's why God will remove you out of your comfort zone. 
because it's never a comfortable process when it's time to let go of something that you may have fell in love with. See, through Christ, this is what God wants for our lives. In Colossians 2, verse 2 through 3, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding and order that they may know the mysteries of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. See, God wants us to come to the complete understanding of how much he loves us. He wants us to know the mysteries of him and the plans that he has for our lives. See, he created us to have a relationship with him, to get to know him, to have joy in our hearts so that we won't live in a state of confusion. See, when we chase after our own lustful desires, that's how the enemy will cause confusion in our lives. But when we chase after Christ and find new identity in Christ, not only will we have confidence, but we also gain clarity so we can understand and make sense of the stuff that we may have went through. See, Christ, when he laid his life down, he understood why he had to do it. So that's why when the Heavenly Father take us out of our comfort zone, when we truly live for him, just like Christ lived for the Heavenly Father, we will understand why we had to go through so many hardships. Because God is breaking off the old identity to give us a new identity. And that's how we start living in the abundance of God. Through Christ, we gain access to that treasure, the treasure of everlasting life the treasure of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the treasure of knowing how much God loves you. We got to treasure that in our hearts because wherever your heart is, there will your treasure be also. One of the scriptures that I've been meditating on lately is Mark chapter 2, verse 21 through 22. And it says, no one sews a patch of unshrunk clothes on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskin. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skin. And both the wine and the wineskin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. See... The reason why I've been meditating on that word because recently the Heavenly Father spoke to me and he said he can't pour his abundance in a broken vessel. See, that broken vessel is attached to old habits, an old environment, an old mindset. So that's why before he blesses our lives, he got to separate us from the land of familiar and place us in a new environment in order for us to develop and grow. And we got to undergo a spiritual maturity before he can pour his abundance in us. Because if he pour into us as a broken vessel, and that broken vessel is attached to the old, every single thing that the Heavenly Father pour into us will spill out. So that's why the enemy works so hard to keep you living in a state of brokenness. He wants you to live in the thing, in the very thing that the Heavenly Father hates. And that's what I read back in Proverbs. A lying tongue. Someone that stirs up conflict in the community. Someone that bears false witness. Someone that starts trouble. Someone that live in a state of hatred. The real reason why we live in a state of hatred is because we're not living in what we love. We live in what we hate. There's a reason why you feel so bad about yourself all the time. There's a reason why you always fussing. It's because we have allowed the enemy to confuse our mind. We're not using discernment. And that's because a lot of times people post certain stuff on social media. And 
They say they love God in front of the audience, but then they turn around and do something that God hates. So the enemy will use that to cause temptation to fall upon you, a state of delusion, because the same people that's preaching about God, but at the same time doing something that God hates, they getting the views. They look like they live in a life that's filled with abundance, but really it's leading them down a rabbit hole that eventually will cause more lack, more dysfunction, more confusion in their lives in the long run, ultimately destruction. If you really want to know who you are in Christ, stop watching other people. Stop watching other people. Because when we're born into this world, right, 17 years of our lives, we watch our parents. That's how we build our character. It becomes traits of our character. And then now that we got social media and all this kind of stuff, we start watching them. So what the enemy will do, if you try to mimic them, right, the enemy will cause you to compare your life to theirs simply because it might not be working as good for you. So that's why we got to have a single mind on Christ. Because if we watch Christ, if we are born again through Christ, if we find new identity in Christ, that's bringing us back to our original form because God created us in his likeness. See, the word of God will never perish. That's Christ, right? And he is the treasure in whom all wisdom and knowledge is within. So if we live in his likeness, that's how we become what we love instead of what we hate. Because at the end of the day, think about what the words say. The world recognize their own. And if you look around in this world, it's filled with hatred. So if you become like the world, you will be filled with hatred, darkness. You will enter into a state of feeling hopeless. That's the enemy ultimate goal, is to make you feel hopeless, causing that unbelief in your heart. But if you store your treasure in heaven, when you deposit your life in the hands of God, in return, he will give you peace because you no longer have to chase what God will actually give you. He wants you to have life so that you have it more abundantly. He wants to give you your heart's desire, but first you must delight yourself in the Lord. Because when we first start off, our heart desires are selfish. But the more we understand that God wants to take care of us, the less we want to fulfill the desires of our own heart that's born from wickedness simply because of disobedience. But the word also say, see, the word continues to remind us of what God wants to do for our lives because the word also say, be sure to live by his instructions. He will make your way prosperous and you shall find good success. God wants to give us stuff. See, the devil want us to rent this stuff. He wants to loan this stuff to us. He wants to create a debt for us. But God wants to pay that debt in full because he created all of it. God don't want us to chase something that he created. It belongs to him. Therefore, if we live a life that pleases God, we too have access to that stuff. What the words say, Luke 12, verse 31, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. God already know what you are in need of. So the thing that we should pray is for endurance, perseverance, strength, Dear Heavenly Father, help me with my unbelief. Let your will be done, not mine. So may you use me in a mighty way so that I may fulfill your will as Christ did. See, the only way we can overcome the schemes of the enemy is resist the devil and he shall flee. You do this 
by repenting. Repentance. Because here's the thing, y'all. Some situations that we're living in that's proven to be challenging are not always caused by the devil. Sometimes the Heavenly Father will sit you in the fire in order to purify you because he got to take the mold off. He got to take the mold off, y'all. He got to crack us out of that mold so we can live in our true essence of being that we obtain through Lord Jesus Christ when he laid his life down. He got to refine us, y'all. So become what you love, not what you hate. At the end of the day, y'all, I don't care how much you think you love sin. The reason why you always feel depressed, you always feel sad, you live in a state of being anxious for everything. The reason why you feel like this is because deep down inside, this is a lifestyle you actually hate. The spirit of God is convicting you, but the enemy will use this social media stuff to make you believe it's okay to live a certain way, to speak with a certain language, corrupt communication. But at the same time, I believe in God. Don't fall for the enemy schemes because the main weapons that the enemy use against us is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The pride of life is the absence of God's presence being in our life. The enemy ultimate goal is to cause unbelief in your heart. So be steadfast. Continue to keep your mind singled on Lord Jesus. That's the only way to become what you love, not what you hate. Allow Lord Jesus to be in your heart. That's the only way. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.